What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So, this is another edition of my segment, The Rundown. If you're new to my channel and you're not sure what The Rundown is, basically it's tidbits, little bullet points, and different things, various things going on currently in the sport of boxing. And it saves me some labor instead of making individual videos, and it saves your ears so you don't have to listen to a whole long video i kind of just try to run through the news and talk about some interesting things in the sport of boxing so make sure you like and subscribe and we'll get right into it the rundown so i want to talk about the wbc is allowing lamont peterson and danny garcia to take place at a catch weight now i've already reported that this fight was taking place at a catch weight of 143 and i guess they were trying to petition to change that to make it a unification bout which i was all for because I, I feel it's very unfair. I respect both of the fighters, Peterson and Garcia. Actually, Danny Garcia, he's just um, reposted some videos that I did. And uh, he, he liked my post on Twitter and stuff like that. So um, there's no bad blood or hard feelings or anything. Um, but I call it down the middle. And as far as Peterson and Garcia, I just think if you have two guys that are champions and one technically, well, actually both of them technically Depending on who you ask, and, and if you look into the, the track files, the track record, they shouldn't be champions if you were to favor Mauricio Herrera in the Danny Garcia fight. I thought Herrera won. Some people did, some people didn't. But then you look at Lamont Peterson, an even more obvious case, and that's just because Peterson fought Lucas Matisse at a catchweight and he got stopped. And had it not been for that catchweight, he would have lost his title right then and there to Lucas Matisse. So... Technically, he wouldn't have been a champion anyway. So it's a good fight still, Garcia and Peterson. But it, it definitely, in my opinion, just my opinion, it loses some luster and some value knowing that win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter that they get to keep their titles. I, I think that's unfair. There's a lot of guys who go through hell and back and don't get promoted by the networks and, and different things like that. And they're still struggling. They're putting on impressive performances, struggling to get um, a title shot. So for for two champions to fight and, you know what I'm saying, you don't have that incentive, it just kind of lessens it. And I really thought this was a unification bout. But anyway, let me just keep going down. You drop your comments. Let me know what you guys think of the catch weight. Uh, next part of news is Brandon Real says he is willing to move up to 154 for either Canelo or Cotto. Now, I thought this was pretty interesting news. Brandon Rios, um, I never really thought of him fighting at 54. I, I think some people talked about him fighting Canelo in the past, but nothing ever materialized. So, I, you know what I mean? I didn't really think much of it. But he's saying he's willing to do it. As far as him and Cotto, um, that's an interesting fight. I think Cotto's more technically sound. I, I mean, I don't I don't know who would disagree with that, but um, Cotto's definitely more technically sound as far as I'm concerned. And he's not the biggest guy at 54. And he's not a true middleweight, in my opinion. So that could be a good scrap. I would have to lean towards Cotto just for his boxing ability. He has he has pop. Um, he's a veteran and that kind of stuff. But it could be interesting because Brandon Rios is one of those. He's what you see is what you get. Having the chance to meet him and stuff at his last fight. Um, I'm telling you, he's every bit of what you see on TV. And he, he stays true to himself. And I respect that because I don't, I don't really bite my tongue. So... When other people don't sugarcoat it and they, they, they're they comfortable in their own skin, I really dig it and I really appreciate that. So uh, what you see is what you get. He takes punches. He's not like this world-renowned defense artist like a Willie Pep or something. But on the upside, he's a hell of an inside fighter. His uppercut is, is probably the best in the business, one of the best, top three for sure in my book out of all the active fighters so he has a nasty uppercut you've seen him hitting mike alvarado with that so i mean if he comes in and you know i mean sometimes fighters when they don't have to kill themselves to make weight sometimes they end up looking better because they don't have to they're in a better mood training because they're not having to eat lettuce and you know what i'm saying and starve themselves out and not eat anything because they're comfortably making a more natural weight like i just seen a recent interview with uh, Brandon Rios, and he looks he looks pretty big, you know what I'm saying? So I think he's a guy who struggles a bit to make some of the lower weights. I don't know how he would do career-wise at 54. I think he's too small, but against Cotto and Canelo, uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. And as far as Cotto and Canelo, you have a lot of Mexican pride there, and perhaps 
two of the best inside fighters in the game currently. Canelo, his inside game is filthy. And Brandon Reels has a disgusting inside game too. So you never know. I would probably favor Canelo in that too, just from being big and rehydrating. But again, Brandon Reels is a guy you can't count out. People bring up um, Pacquiao. Pacquiao's Pacquiao. Pacquiao's a phenom. Pacquiao is a southpaw. He's quick as fuck. Canelo doesn't fight like Pacquiao at all. Like Canelo doesn't um, have the footwork. Sometimes Canelo looks like his feet are in cement versus a Pacquiao who's light on his feet, has a lot of bounce to him. Um, Another thing is Pacquiao, I I would say volume-wise, he throws a lot more. Canelo is more economical. He's more of a boxer puncher than people give him credit for. Some people think um, all the Mexican background, he's he's automatically a brawler or some shit, but he's really not. He's more of a a thinker than people give him credit for, more of a boxer puncher. Um, He doesn't fight like Canelo. So again, I'm sick of, I hate when people give credit to like for other people's victories, like Pacquiao destroyed Brandon Rios, cool, but that's Pacquiao. That doesn't automatically give Cotto or Canelo or Mike Alvarado or anybody else um, the win or the victory. They still have to put it together to beat beat that man. But again, I, like I said, I would favor Cotto and Canelo if they were to fight Brandon Rios. But it is interesting because Brandon Rios, if he comes correct, and makes weight and stuff like that, he's he's always a live dog. The man has heart, so. Um, I would definitely watch those. He he puts on fun fights. Next bit of news, um, just for some matches, potential matches. Uh, looks like Kamagai, the one that fought Robert Guerrero, is going to be facing Alfonso Gomez. My thoughts on that, uh, not a bad fight, but I'm, I'm not really too high up on Alfonso Gomez. I think he's had his window and he just hasn't proven it. You, you gave Canelo a little bit of problems in, in your fight, but then you end up getting stopped. I think the stoppage was kind of suspect. I'd have to go back and watch that particular fight. But I'm just not too high up on Alfonso Gomez. You, you beat a worn down Arturo Gotti. Rest in peace. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like he, he hasn't been the same since like the contender days. He just doesn't seem as complete. That's just me personally. I, I don't know. Like Alfonso Gomez, he just he doesn't. I'd rather see Kamagai versus someone like a Josito Lopez, someone who's at least a little bit, I would consider Josito Lopez a cut above Alfonso Gomez. Um, I believe Gomez fought Sean Porter. I don't know. He just, I feel like every window he's had, he hasn't really rose to the occasion, minus like a Arturo Gatti. Like, he hasn't had in recent memory that I remember a big name win. So, I mean, it's it's a decent fight. But I would rather see Kamagai based on what I've seen with him in Guerrero. And he fought last December. Um, I'd rather see him in there with, with, I don't know, even like a Jesus Soto Caras or Andre Berto or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that, that'll that make more of an exciting war. That's just my personal opinion. But anyway, that fight's on. And then another fight that's close, not close but no cigar, Mike Perez, the Cuban heavyweight Mike Perez, and Alexander Povetkin. Now, this is a good match because... Povetkin still rated pretty high. Um, Povetkin's similar situation to what I was saying with Alfonso Gomez. Uh, he was heralded, and people were like, "Oh, he's the he's the one to beat Klitschko." Stepped up, got his ass whooped by Klitschko. He really had no answers. Klitschko was leaning on him, doing all the veteran tricks in the world, and he just couldn't produce anything. He couldn't get past the jab. He got knocked down. It was just it was ugly. So um, some people were saying, "Oh." It's a loss to Klitschko. It's like a loss to Mayweather or a loss to Pacquiao. It doesn't really mean much. That's true. But mentally, it does. Because, again, before the fight, he was saying he was the man, him and his team. They thought he was the man to beat Klitschko. And they were horribly wrong. So, um, he's on the comeback trail. He beat Manuel Char, stopped him, I believe. And he's on the comeback trail. Same thing with Mike Perez. Mike Perez, he, he just fought a, a bum. Like, he looked out of shape in his last fight. But Mike Perez looked good. He had three knockdowns in the first round. Uh, before that, he didn't look so hot against uh, Bryant Jennings. And I talked to Perez when I was out in Denver, and he said he, he had some complications leading up to that fight. So that's why he performed like he did in the Bryant Jennings fight. Word on the street, I heard he has some issues like with weight and stuff, but he's he's I seen him in person, and he, he's maintaining that very well. He, he looked like he was in great shape, um, even if you look at his last fight. He had a six pack and stuff. He he looks like he he's getting back buckled down and um, getting more focused, if you will, to live that pro athlete life and stay regulate what he's doing 
and his body weight. Because even some people get it twisted. Just because you're a heavyweight doesn't mean you could just let yourself go. And just because, like, other divisions might be a little bit stricter. Because let's say I'm a welterweight. I'm 6'4", 6'5". I'll never be a welterweight. But um, let's say I'm a welterweight. You know you got to hit that 147 mark or whatever. With a heavyweight, you could weigh 205, 201, 226. You could weigh 253. You know what I'm saying? You could weigh 275. It's different. That's why I think they should have like a heavyweight and a super heavyweight. Like let these motherfuckers who, who weigh like 230 and 235 and up, let them fight each other and, and instead of them fighting people who weigh like closer to the Steve Cunningham 199, 203 pounds type shit. This is my personal opinion. But anyway, Mike Perez, Povetkin, this is a good fight. And it's a it's a it's kind of a do or die fight because both guys want to get back. They want to climb up the ladder. Um, Mike Perez wants to show the world that the Bryant Jennings, how he looked, how he performed was a fluke. Same thing with Povetkin. He's like, oh, you know what I mean? He might want to eventually rematch Klitschko or some shit like that or fight like a Deontay Wilder with the belt or if Bryant Jennings beats Klitschko. Which I would favor Klitschko, but hypothetically, if he beats him, he, he might want to fight the Brian Jennings. So both guys are looking to get back. The heavyweight division is picking up. It's starting to pop. And both guys are looking to get back into contention for one of those world titles. So this is a good eliminator type fight between two of them. They both can crack. Um, I would say, yeah, I mean, they both got power. So I, I like this fight a lot. I think this is good in terms of their stature. Like, again, Povetkin, he was fighting Klitschko. He looked, I mean, he, he's big and compact, but he's short compared to Klitschko. He's a lot smaller. Mike Perez, he's, like I said, I was I talked to him. I interviewed him and stuff like that. I'm 6'4", 6'5", and, and he's shorter than me, but he's built. So I think in terms of stature, Povetkin and Mike Perez match up better. He, you know what I'm saying? He's not going to wor- have to worry about a fucking... LeBron James wingspan of uh, fucking Klitschko or Deontay Wilder. So this is a good matchup between two guys who are going to be working to to land that that big power shot. And some people rate Alexander Povetkin really high. I personally don't. I think he's a good, solid fighter. But to me, the mark of a true champion is what you do when you step up in class and you face that elite level guy. He had his opportunity with Klitschko. And Klitschko, to me, is right for the taking. A lot of people question his chin. He's been dominant so long, so how is he staying hungry after all these years and being dominant um, so long? So he was right for the picking, and then he, he failed to meet those expectations. And you look at guys like Mayweather, who stepped up against Diego Corrales. He stepped up against Gennaro, and what did he do? You look at Manny Pacquiao when he fought Barrera. That was like one of his step up. What did he do in that fight? So... I'm not rating Alexander. I mean, the heavyweight division is not super stacked, so I'm sure he's ranked pretty high. But I'm talking about in terms of um, like all-time heavyweights and just a like an elite. I would never call him elite at this point because he didn't really he didn't show me nothing in the in the Klitschko fight. He didn't really show me nothing. And then you look at the bodies on his resume: Manuel Char, decent. Um, he beat Hasim Rockman, but. And I, I hate using this because I, I think it's overused in the sport of boxing. But when I say it, I really mean it. I think Hasim Rockman was well past his prime. And again, I hate using it because so many people say everybody's past prime, even when they have more in the tank. But to me, it, it, I think Rahman was, uh, Hasim was just so far removed from his knockout of Lennox Lewis. Even in the Lennox Lewis fight, he came back and lost that fight. You know what I'm saying? So I think he was he was well past it when he fought. Alexander Povetkin so as far as I'm concerned some people might say he's gonna blow Mike Perez out of the water as far as I'm concerned this is a good uh, 50-50 fight 60-40 where either fighter has a chance to win in my opinion so let me know what you guys think of this episode of the rundown I try to cover it give you guys some some tidbits some good points in boxing drop me a comment let me know what you guys think of this episode make sure you like my video as always hate comment and subscribe until next video is ego signing off Mm -hmm.